I think we're good. Maybe that. I don't know. <laughs> I gotta bother with that light, except for just standing in front of it. Then I'll block it. Yeah, uh, clearly we're not in the normal studio, Lego room, whatever you want to call it. I'm in my garage. Hello, everybody. It's Maniac for Bricks. And I'm here with a haul. I haven't done one in quite a while. Uh, a live haul, that is, not just a haul video. But I kind of want to experiment with it again, um, just to see how it goes, if people are interested with it. And it may be the new direction for haul videos. I have a schedule for 2019 videos that may get better over time when it comes to the number of videos or the variety of them. For right now, I'm just kind of keeping it a little limited so that it's um, on the main channel that is Maniac for Bricks. It's limited right now so that I can meet up with it. I always have this pressure that I put on myself, a higher standard than what I can normally accomplish. So it's best for me to just get a few over the weeks and see where it goes. And hopefully with those, they'll be better quality. Less is more, quantity over uh, quality over quantity. That's the word. So uh, whoever's here, thank you for joining. This is a Nerf haul that I picked up earlier today. Uh, the first thing I have, uh, first thing will just be like, here it is, and then we'll get to the, the main show. First thing I have, um, over the holidays, I had a repeat of a gift, so I had to get it exchanged. And what do we got? Dan Box, how's it going? <laughs> Good, I can see it from here. And I wasn't sure how the chat was going to work from like, it's like four or five feet away. Um, so I had a gift that I needed to exchange, and then with that return, I was able to pick up this Nerf item. It's a Nerf Modulus Tri Strike. This has actually been out for quite some time, and most of you have probably seen this through Target. They've had it for, you know, this used to be around like $60 or so, and it's got bumped down to like $25 or so at Target. The difference is, this one came from Home Goods, and it has a little more than I was expecting, or a little bit more than what the Target one offers. Target one, it gives you main, the main components of like the blaster itself, the demolisher, the pump for the missile, as well as a stock, so you can press it against your arm nice and easy. And there's also another addition here that could be for extra, I think it's the mega darts that can fit onto this. And it, you know, attaches to the barrel too, so it extends out the, the blaster a little bit more. What's unique about this one, and I'm not sure if this was like a first edition release or a special edition or anything like that, I haven't looked it up yet, just got home. This has three other accessories with it. I, again, have not seen this elsewhere. I don't know if it was a previous copy, but it looks pretty good. So this one includes, for the for the three extra copies in here, we have a targeting light beam, which would basically just be like a small light to go out of it and then kind of line things up. Tactical light. I don't know how well any of these are going to work as far as lights go, like for brightness and whatnot, but we'll see how uh, a little bit later. And a grip blaster. Grip blaster is always good. I like having a Nerf gun, or Nerf blaster, I should say. Um, I like having a Nerf blaster that I can hold in two hands. And uh, sometimes they work well with, like, the second handle being a pump for the blaster. Sometimes it's, well, it could be like this, where it could actually attach it onto there. And it has two shots additional with it. So if you pack all of this together in one combination... You've got a lot of options for for firing. You have, you know, the main blaster, the demolisher missile, the mega darts, and the extra handle. So, you know, that's like, what, three, four things all together. This was cool to pick up. I definitely wanted to get this one over the target tri-strike. Again, I don't know if it was a first edition or anything like that, but I do like the extra accessories for uh, for what's here. Is so far the largest Nerf box that I've ever had for a blaster. Um, especially for late, because a lot of them have been, like, pretty compact. And then, I have this large bag sitting on the ground. It's, like, three, four foot bag. It's, like, it's. I think it's, like, a hockey bag or a sport bag or some kind. Um, this is something that I found over Facebook Marketplace. So, good luck if you can find something similar like this. I look in there for different Nerfbots, so I try to look for different blasters that might be in there that be worth buying the whole lot. And I've done this before with eBay as well. This one, 
it immediately stood out to me in one of the photos for one thing I wanted to get in here. And what else I got was incredible. Um, when I picked this up, I was basically, you know, I, I basically tested all of the blasters before making the payment. And um, that's where the majority of the, the cost of the haul, like, oh, it's so, like under 60 or whatever I titled it was. Technically, this was a gift exchange and like a, another like 10 or $15 but that wasn't that bad for what extra I have in here. That's, that's very nice. The rest of this is like 40 or $45. Keep that in mind as you see all the different blasters that are in here, because trying to find them in retail, it's, <laughs> this is a really good value. All right, let's get this open. And believe me, it's going to be harder for me to do all the cleanup after the live stream than to show it all uh, during, but I have to mention this. This is what drew me into the hall or into the, the nerf lot. And I still have to do a little more testing with it, but I think it's, I think it's functional. This was the earliest nerf blaster I ever had. It broke a long time ago. All the pieces broke as well. Like it was interchangeable, like the modulus series. And, um, while I don't have all the pieces back, it is nice to have once again, the base model for the super max, 5,000. This is usually a harder one to come by, or at least it's a very valuable one to a lot of nerfers. And I have looked for this on eBay. Uh, it's not that I was like having a hard time buying it. It was out there, but it was expensive. So I thought if I just wanted to get like the main components, have something to fire with it, even if it doesn't have all the parts, it's nice to have the same blaster over again. This is so cool. This to me was worth a lot. There are dozens of other blasters in here as well. It is an air pump type. And it has three ways of firing. You actually have like another clip or something on top of here. Most of these have actually broken. I don't know if I can repair them and like try to fit them back on later. But as the base blaster would be, you have all these like screw on nozzles. So this one, I have to figure out if it's for the darts or for the missiles. But it's one of those two, that much I know. And I do have um, both of them. I do have missiles and darts in here, so hopefully that will that will help with this. Um, a lot of these Nerf guns are not just for me to collect, but also to review. So sometime later between uh, Maniac for Bricks and Maniac for Bricks and Toys, or no, I'm getting my own channels confused. Sometime later on one of my YouTube channels, either Maniac for Bricks, Maniac for Bricks More, or Maniac for Toys and Games, you will see a lot of Nerf stuff. I mean, not just, like, the number of blasters, but also, like, a number of videos. I definitely want to review a lot of these and go over picks of my favorites and least favorites over time. Um, there will be some basically scientific testing <laughs> with a lot of them. Just to, be, just to be sure, like, even if they're used, do they have good range? Do they perform well? You know, all those kinds of stuff. So... Um, it's, like I said, nice to have the main blaster, and I can tell that it does work. I have to figure out which, um, uh, ammo goes in here. The other option, it has, like, an orange tube in the original model where you can stuff a whole bunch of ballistic balls, or foam balls, inside of here. They're a little larger than the rivals. And, um, I don't have that with me. I don't have that in here, but that's fine. I would like to use this as best for the rocket function. It's very lightweight for a rocket blaster compared to other ones I have, like the Titan ASV or the um, Aerostorm, which we'll get into a little later here. But I think this, I think should, I think this should still be fun, but this was, this was what caught my eye to the Nerf haul. A lot of the other stuff is like bonus for me. Aerostorm, I did previously get an Aerostorm in a Nerf lot haul uh, from eBay, but the problem with it was I didn't know when I didn't know how broken it was until I got it in the mail. I mean, I already knew as a precaution it didn't work, but I didn't know that it was like literally split in half and like virtually useless. It has a big spring in it, I'll give it that. But this one is a working copy. I have actually tested this with arrows. And it's a crazy loud spring. It's, I mean, I've seen the spring in this from the broken copy. It's huge. It's long. It's crazy. So this is not one I'm going to use that much indoors. Uh, a lot of these I'm going to test outdoors at a park or something so they get better, like, visual and a better uh, performance. Like, see how they all 
you know, fire out. But this one is pretty cool. You basically pump it back and it'll fire one, rotate the barrel to the next one. So it could hold up to six arrows on here. It also has a handle on top, which I guess is more for convenience. I don't think anybody's really gonna like prime it from there. That, that just doesn't make sense to me, but interesting design. An older Nerf weapon. There are some older ones, but there are some newer ones as well. And there's also some that aren't Nerf. I get them out once in a while. I don't mind them as much. I still think they'd be good to like expand and explore things. It's just like how I do the Lego stuff. I'm primarily focused on Lego when it comes to collecting, building, playing, everything associated with Lego. But it's good to step into the Lepin every once in a while, the Block Tech, the some people would say Mega Blocks for that category of like knockoff. And it, it's just good to step in that just to see what the competition is like, just to compare and contrast of something that might be similar and sometimes more affordable. This one, I don't know the brand of it right off the top of my head. I haven't researched it yet, but I will look into it later. It really doesn't have any stickers or anything on it to say what it is. But all I know is that you pump it from the top, it fire one, and then it'll rotate the barrel. It seems like pretty compact for some other Nerf blasters that do the same thing, maybe a little bit larger or a little bit more underneath, whatever else is going on. Kind of works, but again, a lot of testing will be done later, so you get to see how a lot of these will work. I, I kind of want to do a thing where it's like, oh, maybe in advance of all the reviews, you know, I would do a lot of the range testing. Like, just knock them all out in one day or something like that at a park. Maybe I could take all the range test footage and make that its own video, say, on here, where it's like extra content, bonus stuff I wouldn't put on the main channel, but just kind of interesting, or I just thought it was fun to share. That might be one of those kinds of things, even though it would be a preview, and, and that would be okay too, like sneak previews or whatever, of what is going to come up, which would be like, oh, I'm testing these blasters or whatever. So there might be another one like that in here as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. This one was peculiar. I didn't even know if there were reviews about this. Dan Boggs, what do you got here? Good idea. Thank you. Uh, what was the other thing? Doing well, sweet Nerf gun. Thank you. This one I thought was pretty interesting when I first saw it, and I didn't really go into the, the lot knowing this was here. A lot of these, I was like, ah, they seem okay, but I'd still test them before trying it out. I'm not going to give full reviews about any of these like on camera. I'm just kind of showing what's what the variety is. And remember, a lot of these were all for the package of $45. It's a really good deal. I'm telling you, it's a really good deal. Um, but this one kind of looks like it's a sniper, which I thought was a really cool idea. It's like pre long strike. You got something pretty sniper like. Even the scope of it is built in, but it's got a nice, like, binocular look. It's very, very fuzzy in here. A lot of these will probably need some cleaning or dusting off and whatnot, but, um, but I like the look of it. And it even has, like, crosshairs on the other side, I can see. This is called the Expandablast from the. Hypersight series. I thought it was called Hypersight, but I had to look it up and it's actually called the Expandablast because you have the you have the barrel in front that well expands as you use it. But you can also use it in uh, compact form. But it basically works like that. That would be how to extend it, expand it, whatever the word is. And I'm not really sure what this part on the bottom does. It just kind of it has a very small spring in here that kind of just like flies out. I don't know if it's like it clips into place or something. It kind of clips into place, but I don't know what other purpose it has than um, than that. Like it shows an arrow on here of, of flying out, but I have to look up what other reviews are out there about this. So compact form, that's the extended form. So it, it releases both of them at the same time. You can also use that as a second handle. I'm obviously giving a point there for that. Fun. But yeah, I'm looking forward to testing this one out. This does look pretty unique. Um, just for cosmetics, it looks very unique. I did have this one in another extending rear stock, maybe. It's weird because it's it's very flimsy. Like, like that piece swings back and forth. So I'm like, I don't know if you really like would rest that on your arm, but it's a possibility. Um... Oh, okay. I thought I missed something else. This one I got in another Nerf haul 
from eBay a while ago. I don't even know if I published it on Maniac for Toys and Games, but there's a lot of backlog footage for videos. Some of them are going up. Some of them are just, you know, being canned. Um, and this one's called the Nerf Auto Grip from the Cyber Strike series. It basically works. You, you would have a big piece that's not available here, unfortunately. Even another copy I have, I don't have that piece. But it's supposed to be something you would stick onto your arm. Like, like to wrap around your wrist or something. You would have a pin on here that can that can pull out and oh that's the priming. That's the hide it. And you or maybe it's the other way, I'm not really sure which way it's supposed to go on your arm. But either way, you'd have this pin that would release this and you press on the trigger. It's a very small pistol, kind of a gimmicky blaster sort of thing, but interesting nonetheless. I don't know if what to use for like attaching this to my arm. If I would use that for review, um, I don't even know the order of what's exactly going to be reviewed for Nerf stuff, and it may not even be from this pile to start things off. It may actually be more of the current stuff, and then vintage here and there. But at least I know that's there. There's a stockade shield, which is always good to have for uh, for accessorizing. I'm just going to stick that one back in because there's not much else I need to do with that out of the box. We have a Nerf Modulus. I have not tested this yet because it's none, nothing in here came with... It has some darts and some arrows and a few other things. It does not have any clips. And I wasn't worried about that because I do have clips already. But this is my second Modulus now, which I can now test. Make sure it works as a flywheel. I don't know if it's going to get better performance than the original one that I had, which was already pre-used. Um, I do have another one that's coming in real soon, so there'll be three types to test out. Sometimes they do vary from one blast to another in the same, you know, model. So, we'll see how that goes. This one I think everybody knows is the Super Soaker. Or, like, the definitive, like, Super Soaker. That's what everyone was... I don't know if this is actually Nerf branded or Hasbro branded or Kenner or whatever company at the time made it. Um, it just says TKP007. Now, it's a James Bond water gun. But it seems comfortable and easy to, like, squirt. But I haven't filled it with water yet. I haven't really tested that. Super Soakers and other similar water guns would actually have their own kind of testing, separate from Nerf ones. Especially when it comes to water pressure and, like... The spurts. I don't know the right word for it, but like it's really hard to test ammo when it's water. So I would say like how much is it shooting out per you know pull of the trigger, or would it be the kind of uh, would it be the kind of blaster where you would have you know one trigger pull and it goes through the entire tank? Some of them do that. I've had them. I sometimes love those. This one I thought was a very peculiar Nerf Blaster. And what's also interesting about it is it is not... Oh, there we go. Okay. This is very similar to something you would see in the checkout section of Target. Like, except it would be, like, keychain-sized. But same idea. It would be an air pump blaster. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. All I know is, according to the item, it says 1992 Kenner. Because Kenner used to make a lot of the Nerf stuff for Hasbro. <laughs> and simply, you just you just do that. I don't have any Nerf... Um, let me see. I'll grab one from in the box to test it out. Not a, a bunch of these aren't for Nerf brand. And that's okay with me. I think I said that before. Like, they'll still, for the most part, work. I got the Alien Avenger. Ooh, nice darts. But yeah, this works with like the elite darts, some of the other, you know, modern ones, Accu Strike, because they're roughly the same size. Might be a little tight for it, but the basic idea is you would that would be your prime. When you push it back, shoots the dart. And from here, that's like seven, eight feet or so. Again, we'll be tested at another time. I think this might this removes me of the auto grip, but I don't know what, exactly what it goes to. All I know is that it's it's Nerf. It doesn't really have a a thing to show me what it's what it's for though. But it's in here. I'll have to look that one up because I'm not sure what that's supposed to be for. 
And I can't really, like... Oh. Oh, okay. So, pull it back with that. And then shoot like that. Okay. There are one or two that I didn't test in this procedure before getting them. There might be a few laser tag stuff in here. Whether or not they're Nerf branded. This is the Ratchet Blast. Okay, that definitely goes with one of the other ones, I think. We got another Supermax item here. I used to have the Supermax 5000 and 3000. I mentioned before about having the 5000. Here is the 1500, which is pretty compact, but pretty nice looking. This one, you'd have four darts to load up. You can rotate the barrel for, like, which one is ready to go. You it's another air pump, because this is back when they did a lot of air pump stuff. And it would fire. Rotate, pump, again. You know? But pretty nice. It actually reminds me a lot of, like, a super soaker by the, the design of it. Oh, boy. This is a big bag. This one I thought was also very peculiar. I've only barely big known about Cyber Strike. And this is another one that you can attach to your arm. I don't know if it's really left arm or right arm specific, but it does need some cleaning because the Velcro area is really messy. Like some of it like peeled off. I don't know exactly what to do with that. There's something in here about, I, I have to look at how this works again. I've only vaguely seen a review of this before, but there's something in here about like, I think it's you have to pull this back or something. I don't know if this works. I haven't been able to fire a dart through this. It's called the strong arm. I forgot to mention that. And the, the gimmick with this is that it's, you know, fits fits on your arm. There's like this clamp. I don't know exactly if you're supposed to pull that because it's really not giving me any any change in like the mechanics, like as I move it. Um it has a switch on the side of it where you can fire between two barrels. So fire one at a time and then switch, fire the next one. And also has room on the back for two darts. I think it takes the, the old Megas, not the, the current Megas. So, I do have some Megas around. Unfortunately, a lot of these blasters do have something to do with Megas. So, I'm going to have to find those again and work on that. These are two Super Super Tanks. I'd have to look into which blaster they go to, but I do know that, you know, these are for them. I knew there was a couple Super Soakers in here, and some of them made me that. There's one Super Soaker. Uh, this one I actually have picked up before, like, pretty cheaply at uh, Toys R Us. The Alpha Fire, which is a very simple, basic kind of water water gun. You know, fill it up in the back, squirt here, and, you know, you got everything taken care of. I may or may not have used that in my first water gun shooting gallery video on Mid for Bricks. It was either that one or the green one that was kind of like it. But one of them, I remember, had a very stiff trigger. And it was very hard to keep pressing it over and over again before you got tired. This is one of the Nerf laser tag blasters. I didn't know how far back they went, and now they have new ones. So I'm like, okay. This one in particular is called the Phoenix LTX. And I don't really know how it works. I have to get batteries to really test this one and some of the other uh, laser tag ones out. But it's got a lot of buttons! It has one button here for, for like for your natural trigger, one button here for I don't know what. There's a there's like a switch on the back of it, and it like extends out this piece in the bottom, but I, it doesn't pop out. I don't know what it's for. I don't know what you would um, use that for. But again, I'm gonna have to look. At, this is all before research. Clearly, there's like this little spinny light thing on top here. It's very funky looking, and then they also has a switch on the side for indoor and outdoor use. So I guess that's like a, a different range of where the laser would actually aim up. There's an off switch on the other side, which also has solo, team one, and team two. So, you know, you don't shoot your partner by accident. There's also another switch. There's a lot of switches on this thing. I'm telling you, it's a lot of buttons. There's another switch on this thing that says about the strength, either 10 or 15. So I guess it's like the laser strength and again about maybe the range of it. Um... But I have not, I will admit, I did not try out any of the laser tag stuff. I figure I'll get new batteries and figure from there, see what happens. But I believe this big heavy part at the bottom is where the batteries go. If that's scary to think that it might hold six AA batteries, 
Because that's what I'm getting by, like, the shape of the canister. But it may need that. Let's see. It says something on the bottom. Yeah, six AA batteries. I was right. And that is, uh, that is terrifying. A couple extra stuff in here. I'm not really going to mention that much or really show that much. They're, like, plug-and-play stuff, I guess. I, I didn't really look much into them. They just were kind of there. But I'm not, I'm not too concerned with them. There's more than what I'm asking for, definitely. In here. I have, <laughs> speaking of laser tag stuff, this I still have in my own, like, the original ones that I've, I've, like, got back in the day. Laser Command. These are very, very easy to come by for, um, for laser tag. And it may have a stuck trigger. Yeah, it looks like it gets sticky. It has a reload button on the back of it, reset button on the other side. And it has a small red light that sometimes flashes. It also makes some sounds when you uh, fire it. And there's also in here the appropriate tag for it. So, you know, to where to blast at, you know, your opponent. This is funky. The Nerf Max Force 20, 2112. I think that's just, I think that's just the category name. Because this has to be called something, like, bat-related or vampire-related. Like, this is insane! Look at this! This is insane! It's got these giant bat wings on the side. It has a mouth within a mouth, like a, like an alien xenomorph kind of thing going. The, the, dart the dart sits in there. There's, like, these red eyes on top. This is a peculiar piece. I, again, I have to look this thing up. If anybody's done a review of this, what I should know about it, uh, what I should look for and trying to use it, you can extend that out and it like retracts and fires. That's your prime, from what I know. That's your prime. That's crazy. It's really crazy. And it looks like it has some sort of component compartment or something. Because there's like this there's a hatch on the top or like some groove for a hatch, but I don't know how to open it. I don't want to mess with it too much. And break something by accident before seeing a review of it. Hopefully, there's a review out there for this. Because, my gosh. And it's not the first Max Force that I've had. I think I have, like, one or two other ones previously. Um, or more recently. I didn't ever own them originally. But that one's wicked. That one is wicked. Ah, Can you believe that I'm not even halfway through this? This one, I don't know what it is. It's not Nerf. It's not a dart blaster. It just looks like it's a generic laser gun that is painted for Star Wars. And may have just been licensed by Star Wars. But it's not something I'm going to run. And I don't really know if I'm really going to review it. There are definitely a bunch of duds in here that I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. Or if there's anything to do with this. It has a removable stock, apparently. I don't know why, but you can do that. On and off switch. There's a trigger. And there's all these little, like, inserts but I don't know what they're for. I don't know if this can really like twist off or anything. It doesn't feel like it can. There's a speaker, so it must make sounds. Maybe it makes lights too, but it may just be like prop gun, <laughs> you know, costume piece. There's a lot of jerseys in here for the, um, for dart tag, for the laser command, as I talked about before, possibly a Star Wars clone rifle. Yeah, maybe. I know that I had one, but I still have one. I have, like, three different types of Clone Wars rifles. First one I had, it was a dart one. I believe it was licensed through Nerf um, with Star Wars. And it's, like, it has a little point on top of it with a red dot sight. So, you know, very basic blaster. There is another one I have that you can put a Wii remote into it and a nunchuck on the back and use it with Wii games. Kind of like how the Wii Zapper works. And that one I got intentionally because I'm, like... This is so goofy, why not? Then there's that one. Alright. <laughs> here's, here's another Super Soaker. We have the Scatter Strike. So, basic basic motion there for trying to pump it and, and use it. So it's like, pump, squirt, squirt. You know, that kind of thing. So, not much for, like... It looks like it has a tactical rail on it, but I don't think it's one you can actually use. Doesn't, yeah. Doesn't have the same feel. Oh my goodness. There's still more in here. Arizona. That's all I know. It's it's Arizona. 
It's a really bulky looking, almost sci-fi blaster that holds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Yeah, it holds ten darts. Not bad for something this size. And basically, you prime it like this. Fire it. Prime. Fire. Prime. Fire. I think you do have to rotate it yourself, though. Either that or it's broken. Um, and I have been able to get it to fire. I just didn't test yet if it would actually, like, turn it automatically. It's not much for, like, holding ten rounds on a pistol. Even if it is really bulky. It's interesting. It's basically, like, a first impression sort of thing. Um... Okay, there's a lot of wires for... There, there's a couple plug-and-play stuff in here. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not really going to touch upon everything. Because some of it is just like, ah, whatever. It's it's extra. It's on top of what I uh, expected to get out of the Nerf pile. Nerf is like a generic term, the same way that Lego is a generic term. Um, you know, for, for that kind of toy. Any dart blaster, water blaster, um, light gun can be considered nerf. People would just collectively call it all nerf. Even in the nerf community and modding community and things like that, I have seen that come up as like, yeah, we just call it nerf. Um, or even like a title for a video might have like nerf tank, uh, nerf RC tank. And it may not just be the Terrascav, which is produced by nerf. It may be a Five Below brand one or something like that. But it's like, you still get the idea of what it is. Like, if I said a Lego drone, it's not made by Lego. It's made by Proto. But you get the idea of what it is just by the name. It's like, oh, you can build on it. You know, that, that's the sort of thing. This, I have not looked up yet. But I can tell it's old. Because the, well, first of all, really worn. Second, the color scheme. And third, the Nerf logo on here is older than some of the other ones. This is basically an arrow, a bow and arrow. It actually has a little crosshair in here, which I thought was interesting. Two big uh, compartments on top for the, whatever you call it, the, well, the arrows on it, I guess. And it's weird because the handle is upside down. Maybe they, maybe they tied it on wrong because the handle should really be like this. See the Nerf logo. Uh, like that, so I'm just gonna keep it this way for now, but it basically works like that, you know, pull it back and let go The strings are very loose on them So I could definitely just like tie that up and make it a little more taut or at least as you know A little more taut to like when it's extended like this the bottom one has black So I would fix that more than the top one Strings are my mortal enemy, but I will do my best with it <laughs> And, yeah, there are some rockets I have available for it, so I can launch it. This feels a little bit better than one of the more recent ones of the same old kind. I definitely had one that was from Goodwill that fit, that's virtually the same thing as this in black and orange. And it, had everything. it just had one string broken. But this feels more, like, powerful. It feels a bigger impact when you actually launch it. In fact, I don't remember if that other one was like, oh, you need to use, like, you need to push it after extending it? I don't know. There's this Nerf piece, which goes on the Nerf Cyber Strike Armor Shot. I don't know if that goes with one of the other ones. Maybe it does. But it basically has room for holding eight darts. Interesting. We've got another Super Soaker. This is a Scatter Strike in a different color scheme. You got it. <laughs> We covered that before. This one is a super soaker. It's called the Shot Blast. So a lot more like a shotgun style to it. And that's how it works. It does have tactical rails that you can use with all of your other modulus and elite stuff. Fills in the back. It also has a stock, which I thought was pretty interesting. And also, what is with that logo? <laughs> this is a very interesting logo on both sides of this thing. It has an S with like this, like, fang look on the opposite side of it. I don't know if it's going to come through here, but you can kind of see it right below the orange fill tank. It's very interesting. I, I've never seen that before as a logo, but I don't know if it's exclusive just for this. Only fires from one tank, from what I can tell. But I'm sure with this, it's like a good range to it, even though it's, you know, basically a shotgun. But look at all that tank in here. All of this you can fill with water. 
And yes, that is the sound of everything falling over everything else. This one is not nerfed as far as I know, but it is called Sizzlin' Cool. It has a strange switch on here that doesn't seem to move, but it looks like it does. Uh, so I don't know what to make of that. It does not move. I am pushing as hard as I can. And it has an arrow to say, no, you push this. No, you can't. It just looks like you can. Don't lie to me. <laughs> you knock off nerf. So yeah, sizzling cool. One side is more faded than the other. And it still has some water. It's it's more vapor <laughs> at, at this point. Because they're just seeing like a, a, a short spray with it. But I guess if you want to have the same function, it's a little more compact. Like you could, you could have this on you. Not too bad. All right. Did I remind you that all of this and more was $45? Yeah. Still had to go and pick it up myself, but still, it's a lot. This one is definitely modified. I've never had a modified Nerf weapon before, but I think this might be the first one. It is called the Thunderstorm, and I believe this was a, a battery-operated water blaster. If it's modified, interesting, but... I could be wrong, maybe because this is battery operated I thought it was modified, but it could just naturally be one like that, and shooting water out. Tactical rail on top, extension on the back. This again has that S logo, which might show up a little more clearly because it's not, it, it's painted. The gray logo right there. I thought that was kind of cool. And this is virtually the same as a Raider pitch stock, which is good. It's also pretty sturdy from when I tested it back and forth, like extending it in each uh, end of it. So, yeah, not bad. I have no idea if any of this stuff is rare. I have no idea if finding any of these is rare. Um, but yeah, this is definitely painted over. That much I know. It's, you know, these are not natural strikes on it, but it looks pretty cool. I, I'm not going to lie with that. And that's also, okay, now I figured it out, what these two tanks go to. Interestingly, the person who had this before had it so that you could hook up one... Like, you hook these up like a flip clip, where you would have two two clips attached to each other relatively in the middle, and then it's like, when you're done with one, drop it, flip it over, and, you know, resume. This works in the same way, or at least that's how this person engineered it to work. Because these would normally be two separate ones you can put on a belt loop. But, alright, it looks pretty good. I gotta fill this thing with water and see how that works. I still have an unlocking uh, system here. It it doesn't seem to catch on that well, and I don't know if it has to do with the paint job or the age of it or the fact that these are two taped together. <laughs> that is that is very interesting. And I think they still have water in it, but it's not really receiving the water when I'm um, when I'm using it. So yeah, looks nice. Looks pretty badass actually. And there's also I think a name on the back of this. I might have seen that already, and I forgot to mention it. It says Sally with a couple of strikes on it, which is very cool. Again, badass looking. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight strikes on it. I don't know if there was an actual record of theirs, but it still looks good. This is a Vortex refill pack, so I can add a whole bunch of discs in here. I don't even know if I have enough to fit in here. This holds, this holds 20. I don't know if I have 20. And honestly, right now, I don't know if I even have a blaster that works with this. But if at any point I need to use a uh, Vortex Disc Blaster, I do have a few. Uh, they can't receive this, but this would be like a good ammo pack on the side. I right, got two other ones in here. This one is definitely not Nerf. This is just called Imperial 1991. Well, it's around the time of Nerf. And it's, it's the kind of thing you probably see at a, at a dollar store. You pump it from the back, it loads up the next dart, so all of them will go upwards. And it shoots out. The darts in these are very flimsy. <laughs> they're, they're made as like a plus sign structure to most of it. And they have a suction cup on the back. So that's how they would work. And the only way to refill the entire thing is to like pump it all the way through. And then I think it should be able to slide back. Or maybe I have to let the last one fire and then... And then I can remove it. Yeah, there we go. 
There's like these little points in the back of it that hold it in place, which is good. It's, for something, for something knockoff, it's got a working system. So I can't argue with that. I will, I will say though, if you keep pushing it through, you know, it's not going to stop it as soon as the first one goes in. So you kind of have to line that up, like so. All right, all right, not not bad. This one is not Nerf. Looks like a, another one of the Nerf laser tag ones. And again, a lot of buttons. What is up with the the laser tag ones? Have so many buttons on them, which I'm sure do nothing, or have a whole bunch of game modes that nobody plays. This one in particular is from Tiger Electronics. It's simply called Laser Tag Team Ops. Sounds like a, a, a jumbo shrimp, like a, an oxymoron to me. Sound on and off setting. There is a function. It just says function, and it's only on one side holding it. Again, it has a little uh, turn thing on the top. It has two barrels. A trigger, and then an under trigger. It looks like a recharge thing on the bottom here. Because it's some kind of, like, insert. Humble pack and HUD heads up display. Okay. <sighs> I didn't know they were going to get that fancy with it. All right, then. Um, oh, the bottom one says shield. Okay. Interesting. I don't know if this one actually has the, the matching target with it, though. And then there's, like, a screen, an LCD screen that's built onto the back of this one. It says cancel, second F. Where's the first F? Second F. Display, reset, include, declude. It's INC and then DEC. I'm not sure what that means. Tell me what it means to me. And then in the middle it says okay. Maybe it's like an up and down and like a, there's a menu on here. This also has a click to it. So maybe that's like, a, it says reload. Okay, there you go. So you can keep blasting with it. Reload. That's more convenient than like an arcade game where it's like you have to fire off screen and then re and, and it would count as a reload. Ugh. We have another stock in here. This one, I don't know which one it goes to, but it looks like a nice stock. It's only a somewhat flexible, not as flexible as some of the other uh, modulus ones from what I remember. I do not own every Nerf Blaster, so I could be completely wrong, but it seems comfortable. I have tried that one uh, previously. We've got the Striker. It's a water blaster. It is made by Swimway from 2014 Blood Force. That sounds intimidating. That's, that's it. That's all you do. You can fill it on the top. And I will say it's a convenient handle where it's like the entire thing is the trigger on the front of it. Where all that blue is. Alright then. That's that. Air Zoomer from 2012. I think I have seen this one before, like in a Goodwill or or somewhere cheaply. Uh, it's basically a pistol. It holds three rounds, so it's like a tri-strike. Uh, not tri-strike. It's the one we talked about in the beginning. This is like a um, triad. Thank you. That's the one I was thinking of. Pull it from the back, which is somewhat broken, but it also works as a keychain, so it's not broken really. It just, it just didn't clip all the way. So you could have this as like a keychain blaster. And then you have to rotate the barrel manually. Pull it again. And I unhooked it from the keychain. Yeah, I figured that was going to be a problem with it. Like, if you have to keep firing with this, yeah, you're not going to fire a lot of shots, but you're going to pull back on that keychain portion. So you're going to, like, it might break the tension or break the plastic at some point. It also has a crosshair on the top here. It can be removed. Good to know. This is what I was talking about before with uh, when it comes to, to blasters that are technically just plug and play. Believe me, I have too many plug and play stuff from when I was younger. I got them all so often uh, for Christmas, for birthdays, from from relatives. It was <laughs> it was everywhere. And one of the ones I have. This is an incomplete copy. But one of the ones I have, I recognize this immediately, whether or not I find it here or in a video game store. 
This is Mission Paintball from Tiger Electronics. This is a plug-and-play paintball first-person shooter game. You just have, like, a couple enemies in the background, and you try to, like, aim it up and shoot at them. So this would be, you know, trigger. I'm not sure what that one is. Maybe it's a select. There's a push safe on and off setting. There's a reset button. On top of here would be basically a piece of plastic. You, you screw it on here, and it would look like the, the paint tank, you know, like for a paintball gun. And that's pretty much it. It does have some really nice color to it. I'll give it that. I have not played it in a long time, so I have no idea <laughs> how good it is. I just remember I was like, oh, that thing. <laughs> I, was, I, have, I remember commercials for this thing. I remember wanting it back in the day. It was one of the few that I really wanted for a uh, plug-and-play. A bunch of them was just like, oh, he likes SpongeBob. Let's get him a plug-and-play SpongeBob. Oh, he likes Guitar Hero. Let's get him a plug-and-play Guitar Hero instead of the real one. <laughs> I think that was my first exposure to Guitar Hero, was plug and play. I'm not entirely sure, but it could be close to that. So yeah, there's that. I've talked way too long about that. <laughs> there's a couple goggles in here that have fallen out here and there. And I'm not sure if this one is Nerf. Oh, wait. wait. Tiger Electronics. Okay, that one is not Nerf. But it may be going with either Paintball or one of the other ones I showed. Um, maybe the laser tag, perhaps. It's got a weird sight thing. I don't know what that is. It's it's peculiar. That's what it is. It's peculiar. We got another Nerf one. This is, again, the Phoenix LTX. Same as the first. It's got the same functions and same things. And I guess it makes sense. I got two of them. So like, you could play with both at the same time. Again, very heavy. <laughs> All for that battery compartment, though. It's, like I said, same functions as first. It's just a different coat of paint. But it's nice. It's It looks really nice. I think this one might be... Okay, there we go. So that one does open, but it looked like the trigger was a little jammed. All the other buttons seem to be working just fine, though. Now, I'm sure this thing has, like... I don't know if the batteries on any of the electronics are going to be corroded. I haven't checked that part yet, but... I've seen a lot of them that are just left in the on position, so that may be. So hopefully I can not only take out the batteries, but also clean out whatever corrosion was in there. Oh my goodness. We are not done yet, folks. It's still going. Yeah! <laughs> Another Nerf Cyber Strike item. This, I forget what it's called. It's like the ratchet something. I, I don't remember what the name was off the top of my head. Oh, wait. No, I found that before. The ratchet. The ratchet blast. Because I remember this was the, the the shield for it. You, like, attach it on the back or something. It's, it's weird. But there it is. Now it looks like I have, like, an arm guard. A wrist guard. So, basically, this one works as I showed. You can do it one-handed. That's 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 pretty good. You, you could obviously like do it by two hand, but you like you have to twist it out and back for it to prime it, and then fire. The interesting thing from what I've seen reviews about this thing long before I even looked at this haul was that you don't have to worry about rotating the barrel, but where the barrel fires from rotates. So like any of these top ones, it could fire from top, middle, or Top, bottom, left, right. You just kind of have to practice with the pattern of it to know which one. Like, if you have them all loaded, you may like what is expected on the top one. It's not like other Nerf Blasters where it's like it'll know um, if you have multiple darts in at the same time that could be fired if it'll shoot one barrel or the other one. This one, it just rotates between them. So I don't know which one it's on right now. I could probably test it. To try two darts in here, which may be a little small for the unit because they can fall out very easily. They think it's supposed to take megas, but they still have enough space where you can fit elites in there. So, yeah, didn't fire from either of them. It had to be either a left or a right because I only put up and down. Oh, that didn't sound good. Now, one click back in place. Are you kidding me? Did I just. I literally just break this on camera. Because I saw something fall. I don't know what it was, though. 
Oh, and like an other part of the arm guard. So like you can surround it like that. Well, now I found that, but what fell and why can't I put this back into place? Or <sighs> biscuits. I really hope I didn't break this thing now. That would stink. Because before it worked fine. As you saw. But yeah, this is what it would look like front, back, sort of, like, top and bottom is what I mean. Oh no. I can see a chipped piece there. I can hear some rattling. That's no bueno. I'm gonna have to talk to somebody about repairing that. I do. I definitely do find some nerf blasters in these lots that are on the verge of breaking or broken. And usually there's a warning about it. This one I tested, but I was there. And I'm like, okay, fine, no problem. I You saw it now. I tested it, and then it just clicked, and oh no. Yeah, it's, it's not going back, so I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that. I <laughs> I feel like I feel like it's it, it's a prophecy. It's like you're getting into Nerf, you're getting old and new ones, you're going to have to learn how to repair them. I never thought I'd have to open up a Nerf weapon. I don't know if I still have to. There may be somebody who knows how to fix that. But now we have that. Um, moving on. A lot of different goggles in here. I'm not going to worry about that much. There's another blaster or two, which I think is another laser blaster because I don't see anything for, for darts in here. And A button, R button, a switch on the back. Not sure what the switch really goes for. Maybe it's like an on all setting? Trigger, and then a max. All right. No brand that I can see on here. Oh, here we go. 1998 Toy Max ELS adapter adapter port. On the bottom here, there's like a little thing that opens up with a string in it. It's got quite the smell. Even if I have a stuffy nose, I can smell that. But there's like a little... Oh, hanging string? What? Oh, ad adapter port. What is that supposed to mean? Like, oh, that's a way you can hang it? I have no idea. It's so peculiar. You think I would know a lot about this stuff growing up with it. But, uh, there's a long period where I didn't know anything, and there's plenty of stuff that's been, like, in the sphere. <sighs> Great, now I can't fit this thing back in. Why am I breaking everything all of a sudden? Okay, moving on. There should be a few more. There's another... Oh! This is $20. I mean, it would still have the ammo with it, but... Basically $20 if you find it today in the store. And like I said, there's a big mess of stuff, which I'll have to uh, take a photo or, like, show you at the end of the stream, of what's in here, what all of this amount to for the $60 haul. Because the, the most of it just fell on top of the tri strike. And it's like, all right, sure. Tried to put it next to it, but whatever. This one did not come with any of the ammo. This is the rival Apollo XV700. I think it's Apollo. It doesn't say. It. But I, I tried looking it up before, and I think it was Apollo. This is the kind where it's like you prime it on top of the blaster. I can't do it now because I don't have anything loaded in it. I don't have anything loaded because it didn't come with one. That's unfortunate. That's probably the one thing that I'm like, oh, that would have been good if it had, um, you know, the ammo with it. But I didn't really ask. I didn't really know if the guy even knew if that the ammo was missing from all of this. So it's still not bad. And it's maybe a little, uh, $15 to get the ammo. It would, it, it's like a tube where you fit rival balls, foam balls, um, into the bottom of here. So, you know, prime it. Requirement. I really don't have I don't have too much preference of red versus blue or white uh, with the rival series. I kind of would have liked the blue better just because it's a good contrast to the orange on some parts. But red isn't bad either. And you saw I had a couple other red weapons. Colors not too big, you know, between them, but like if I had the choice, maybe blue. This is actually the first rival blaster I've ever owned. I have not bought anything rival associated up to this point. So I don't know if this one actually works, but I'll get the ammo sometime later and figure that out. 
Um, I'm excited to try this out because I haven't tried a rival before. Like, never owned one, never tried anybody else's, really. And I have heard a lot of good things about it in terms of velocity and just capacity, you know? This is, like, one of the smaller rival blasters. And I think it can take, like, 12 or 18 or something like that uh, rival balls, which is pretty good. Like, nice and compact in here. But, yeah. Interesting. And like I said, if I had to, if I was out and about and was like, oh, I want to buy that. I get $20. I don't have to worry about that now. I mean, yeah, I still have to get the, the ammo for it, but that's less already. And compared to the rest of this hole, it's pretty good. It's, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that I've missed in here. But I think I covered most of it. Like I said, there's a couple of junk stuff that's on the bottom. Um, oh, we've got another... Or is that the same one as before? My no, that's a, it's the second one, the other other um, laser tag one, ELS adapter port. I still don't know what that means. I'm not gonna open it the entire way. Just curious if it had anything else in there, and it doesn't. It's just like there it is. So yeah, I'll tell you, it was not easy to uh, keep up getting up and down to, to reach all this stuff. It was not easy moving the bag itself. It is pretty heavy with all these blasters in it. And it was not easy, like, I, I had to basically sit on the floor testing all of these against the wall. Um, which, again, like, most of them seem to work fine. I don't know what happened to that ratchet one, though. That's just, that's disappointing. As soon as I bring it home, third time. <laughs> uh, it's not... It's not the seller's fault. Like I said, I'm going to this used. I'm going to expect some breaking or, you know, fairly worn. But um, I'm just surprised that it happened so soon after checking it. Like, oh, this works fine. It's like, now it's done. The very, I, I was walking into its deathbed, basically. <laughs> and then it's like, he's gone. You can try to revive him, but right now, he ain't speaking. <laughs> Oh, the analogies. Okay. Well, let me see. So there's a giant body bag right here, which all this stuff came in. I'm, I'm joking when I say body bag. I'm just saying it's like a large sport bag. It's like a hockey bag sort of thing that a lot of these Nerf blasters were carried through. I'm probably going to relocate them to other boxes and such. Some of them will still go back in here, but yeah. So let me bring it to the floor to show you. Uh, thank you, Dan. Let me show you what a good deal it was. That's everything, or almost everything. That's pretty much all the blasters that I talked about in this whole video. Can you see why I wanted to do this? I've, this would have been nuts so but so, which I've almost never said, so pardon me. This would have been insane to make into a filmed video and publish it later. I probably would have to split it up into multiple videos. But it's like, I can't talk about it all at once. I can't talk about it in in segments without saying, yeah, this was 40 something dollars. $45. And then, like I said, the got the modulus trash strike over where my foot is underneath everything is basically $15. That's a lot of blasters for me to go through. If I didn't own any nerf beforehand, that's a really good collection. I own a lot of nerf now <laughs> before this purchase. So this is like, this may be overkill. I will admit, uh, there's a lot in here that I either won't use or don't plan on making videos with, really, especially for the laser tag stuff. Um, even the Nerf laser tag stuff, I don't have, I don't know if it'll interact with the target appropriately. If it's not from Nerf, you know? Like, let me see in here. It's like this chest thing, I guess, goes with one of them. Blast shield, yeah. Okay, that, that's kind of with one of those uh, cheaper laser tag stuff. This is what I was talking about for the, the vests, for the laser command. I don't know if I put batteries into this and one of the Nerf ones or any other brands. Will it interact between brands? Like, identifying, yes, you got a hit. I don't know. But that's kind of something I'd rather do in the back like, after going through a lot of other stuff in here first, because the other stuff is ready to use. Or 
almost ready to use, with the exception of like two or three of them. But there's still quite a bit to go through, clearly. And that's on top of everything else that I've already picked up, whether or not I've done a video on Maniac for Toys and Games about it. I mentioned before about having a giant eBay haul with a lot of stuff in it, and I still have to go through those. I have my original collection of stuff, which I would like to go through at some point. I don't have a necessary order of what's going to go through, like, what time. Like I said, I thought before, hey, if I do, like, the newer stuff and then the old, older stuff, it might be good. Um, and then, like, the Water Blaster stuff would be its own thing, and the laser tag, I don't even know if it would happen. But there it is. There's a lot of nerf for not a lot of cost. I am, uh, I'm impressed with it. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to try out over here and see if I can find it. Probably buried. It's buried. It's like the first thing I showed, so. It's the first thing I showed, so of course it's buried. I'm getting the Supermax out again. Um, okay, so I do have a clip piece that can fit in here. And I'm going to try it to see if it works with the rockets. Because I know it has before with darts, and it was not cooperating. Like, it just didn't... First of all, it barely fit in there. Second of all, it didn't go anywhere. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's not the right ammo. So let me see. Now, I did mention before, this is an incomplete one for the... There, there may be a few of these that are incomplete. Oh, there's a sling mount. Oh, okay. That's pretty convenient. I was looking into getting one of those. I did mention before that there are some of these that are missing parts or incomplete, or as you saw, they're broken. Um, depending on the severity, I may just hold off on them from, like, reviewing purposes. I'd say for the Supermax, maybe I'd review it before getting the other parts, but I'm not sure at the moment. Because I feel like, oh, it would be nice to review it with all the things there. But a part of me is like, well, I am only going to use it for one or two things. So, now how well it's going to work. Alright, I'm going to see it fly across the... You can kind of see it dangling here. They, these arrows are very worn. And I know there's one of the original ones in here, but I'm not uh, fighting it at the moment. Let's see it fire out. No. Huh. Okay. I don't know exactly how many pumps it takes, but I probably would feel pressure once it got to, you know, the max tank. And I would think that would be like, oh, it's maxed out. But it's like, it feels pretty early. It's not a lot of effort before, it, you know, it's done. And it, it almost sounds like it's coming out of another root. Like, there's another hole or something in it. Even though this thing is, like, airtight. Or it should be airtight on the front of it. I'm really not sure. I don't know if this works. And at least for now, I'm not seeing any progress with it. Like I said, I think this is more of the rocket type than the dart type because the dart inside, or at least the, the receptacle for it, doesn't um, show anything for it. I could have somebody take a look at it later or look at the internals and see what happens. But even just having it as the prop itself feels good. It's nice to have at least the base thing here to say, yes, I did originally own this, even if it doesn't work anymore. Heck, I, I don't even know if mine still works uh, anymore before I, before it's dismissed. I know a lot of the parts broke, like all the attachments and things, and this one is much the same way, so you may have even doubt. So thank you for watching this video, this very long haul about Nerf and a few other products. I got some research to do, um, you know, some more testing offhand to do for some of these, like especially batteries and such. 
And we'll see you next time with more videos. As far as the channel goes, I know that's your segment where it's like, oh, now everybody leaves because he said, see you next time with more videos. As far as the channel goes, I meant to have a video up on last Friday, which was going to be an announcement. It would announce a couple of things for the channel. Some uh, some house clean ha house cleaning housekeeping whatever it's called generic like going on with the channel kind of stuff state of the channel that's it um it would be a couple of updates of what's going on with the channel uh, mostly about the schedule of new videos uh, how often in the week they would be and there's also things that would come up about Patreon. I am starting a Patreon. I've been doing a little bit of work with it in the background for a while. And it's not something mandatory. It's just kind of a a side thing. You know? Whatever works. Um, you know, still still accepting the super chat. You know? But I... The strange thing about it is I haven't seen a lot of it through YouTube. Angle. Not, not like a big number of it. But I mean like what I have... I don't know if it even got sent to me. So it's like, okay, this is an estimated income, but nothing happened from that. I didn't receive that income. So I don't know. Um, there's also going to be a P.O. box, which will be talked about in a video today and tomorrow, or at least if you see anything that will be talked about it with it, it's just going to be in the description now. So like people have asked me before, are you setting up a P.O. box again? Yes, I am. It will be in the P.O. box. Or it will be in the description. Like, what the new uh, P.O. box address is. And there's, again, nothing mandatory for sending stuff. But if it is sent, it will be acknowledged on the channel sometime later. Um, as long as it's appropriate. <laughs> then there's... Uh, I'm trying to think what else there is. There's updates about this channel that will come up. There's updates about Maniac for Toys and Games that will come up. And I'll probably be on each of those channels, so stay tuned here for, like, a not a live stream, just a regular video that's, like, state of the channel sort of thing. Um, what this video, or what this channel is going to be about. There will be some things about channel trailers. Um, a couple other things. I, I can't talk too much about them right now. There was merch. I've been working on merch for quite a bit. And oh, that will be talked about a bit. So it's like, oh, funny moments from Maniac for Bricks that are now available as a cup or a t-shirt or whatever. Again, nothing mandatory to to getting them. It's just kind of like for people who like it, for people who want it, and people in the community do, it's there. It's there for them. Um, I know some people have really been hyped about one thing I've had, which I kind of leaked <laughs> a couple of days ago. And, I, and I'm excited to share about it, too, as actual merch. Um, live streaming. There will be some talk about live streaming of, like, how frequently and how it will be set up. Um, and will it be on one channel, the other channel, Instagram, or other? I've explored the idea of Twitch before, but I haven't done any testing with it yet, so that's a possibility. Um, and I don't think I'm really going to do live stream gaming. Because I haven't tested that fully, and the last time I did, it was very, very, very slow. So, that's probably not going to happen. But, oh, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up. There may be some... If there's a bunch of questions, I may do a QA and a or frequently asked questions sort of thing with it to, like, clarify for people, like, yes and no on different topics. Um, but it should be good. I'm looking forward to balancing the different things that I am interested in on... Maniac for Bricks, Maniac for Bricks and Games, and uh, Maniac for Bricks More are basically going to be extents of that, where it's like, if you if you can't get enough, here it is, like, elsewhere, or, like, snippets of other things that are going on, like, sneak preview. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Nerf is definitely going to be one of those things. <laughs> Make no mistake. So, you know, it's not just going to be Lego or knockoff building brands or mega blocks um or connects it will also be talk about video games not necessarily playing them but like you know i have played them and i will show footage of them but i'm not going to be playing i'm not doing a let's play is what i'm trying to say 
or live stream let's play. Um, and then there's toys. There's a lot of different toys. Nerf, clearly. Um, Thomas the Tank, to some extent. There are plush. I collect stuffed animals and different uh, plush based on things, like plush Lego, plush video games. Uh, that will come up relatively soon, actually. There are one or two, there's like two or three videos about wanted lists, or we'll be mentioning wanted lists uh, relatively soon. One of them is wrapping up from last year. I made a list of my top 11, it's top 10 or 11 uh, wanted items in Lego. Just of all time, like any, any time, mostly retro. And I want to do an update list about that. So it's like, oh, here are the things that I got. And, you know, thank yous to people who, you know, helped with those kinds of things. Um, it's not necessarily going to be a new list of stuff. It's just kind of like saying, how much did I get? And what is still out there? Um, would there be changes to it? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. We'll, we'll see how all that goes. And clearly, I have got a lot to work on. I will be going back to college on uh, Wednesday this week. So hopefully I will have videos. You know, after this live stream, we'll be working on videos for a bit. Uh, hopefully, I'll have videos still going up pretty regularly. I think it's like Monday. I forget if it's. It might be Monday, Tuesday. There's four videos per week. That's the current schedule for them. I have to figure. I have to, I can't remember exactly at the moment what the what the schedule was because I made it a while ago. Um, but there will be videos while I am still at college. They should be auto-scheduled. And every once in a while, uh, maybe a break in between them just as I try to get more videos going. Or in those days where I don't have videos and I don't have uh, classes, I'll work on more videos, basically. But I don't want to work on videos while still doing college, like, one after the other. I want to have a whole bunch of videos done in advance so they can auto-schedule while I'm at college studying where it's important i don't want the youtube stuff on a regular daily basis to take over as it has in the past it's a long form of what i want to put into the announcement video and uh there are also other changes that go with it such as the visuals it's going to be like a, a type of contents or something on the bottom of the of the videos so it'll be like oh if you need to find a certain part of it here's a timestamp for for whatever um, there's also going to be a script for most of the videos now, because I feel like that'll be easier for me to like condense everything and try to just talk about it at one time or whatever. Um, there's a range, accuracy, all those kinds of measurements will be taken into account. Velocity, I'm still trying to work with that one, but it might just happen. Uh, it, it depends because some of them it's like I'm gonna have a hard time testing them, I don't have a chronograph that's going to fit around a um a Titan rocket or something like that. Really big ammo, or, you know, mostly just for darts or dart based stuff, especially if it's in the modulus line, because the, I have the chrono. Barrel, so that's like easy for me to just attach right on there. Take the reading right away um, as it fires. And like I said, the, the super soaker stuff, it will have its own testing. So there may be a separate video about that, you know? So, ow, my foot. <laughs> And we'll see you next time with more videos. Again, thank you for watching.